Euro Asian Bob strikes again, and this time somehow he outdid himself again. Let's get started. In front of you is actually partially disassembled or actually started work on it. It's a 1996 Volvo 850 Turbo with 15,000 original miles on it. Only 15,000. The car smells like new on the inside. In fact, some of the work I've been doing, which I've actually had to do some work today, imagine that. We're doing timing belt service on it. We'll show you that what it looks like here in a little bit. But some of the bolts and things are coming loose so nice and easy, like a brand new car. This entire car is a showroom, brand new Volvo 850. It might as well be. It is that nice. It is perfection on four wheels. Let's go ahead and take a look around this thing. It's got beautiful pearl paint. As you can see on the front, it says Rochester Volvo dealer. It is from New York. And no, it does not have any rust on it because it never was driven. The glass and everything up front is still immaculate, spotless, crystal clear. And there's our Volvo grille in good shape. No peeling chrome. As we go down this side, you can really take a look at that beautiful pearl paint. It's like an ivory pearl, Mrs. Wizard. I'd say this is just true pearl white. Pearl it's white. Amazing. It, the paint on this car is 10 out of 10. It is flawless. So are the wheels. So is everything, every nut and bolt, even the clips that are holding the brake pads right there. 10 out of 10. There is a small scuff here, but it is not in the paint. This is a protective film that's on here, and the film is scuffed, but the paint is perfect underneath, no damage. This is the professor's car from Roberts Wesleyan College in New York. As we come around to the back, there is the classic 90s Volvo. You can see it's an 850 turbo. The tail lights and everything are very nice. What isn't nice on this car? Let's go ahead and open the trunk and take a look. There is the brochure for this car. Here is the Volvo compact disc cartridge. It has a CD changer in the back, OEM from the factory. EuroAsian Bob tells me this is a special model. They didn't send a lot of these over to America with this color and this particular package, so it is a very rare model. There we go. Let's go ahead and look down this side. You can see one wheel is off in the right front, but the paint is equally just as nice. Let's go ahead and hop under the hood and see what's going on under there. Keep in mind, I do have the front cover of this engine apart. I have a timing belt service being conducted at this moment, but you're going to be surprised even how nice the engine is. Look at that, guys. Even the intake manifold is still shiny. Volvo 20 valve. This is the 850 turbo engine. Everything on there is still intact. Even the paint marks on the connector is still there. We still have the little plastic indicator or little whatever you call that on the oil dipstick. And look at that orange dipstick. It looks bright and glowing like the day it was made brand new. Most people are familiar with a rear wheel drive Volvo in the 80s and whatnot, but this one is a front wheel drive model. Look at this guys, it even has the paint mark on this hose, on this clamp. The paint is still there, like it was swiped yesterday. Our coolant reservoir is nice and clean and clear. Even that heat shielding on the firewall is still shiny and new. This thing is a museum piece. You can see down here I have the timing belt off. I have the crankshaft and the two cams placed into their timing position at the timing marks. There's one here, one over here. And down there you can see some orange paint I put that I will remove once we're done but you can see it on the main crank down there. It lines up with the casting on the block. So Wizard, if it only has 15,000 miles on it, why are you doing a timing belt service? Because of age. You're supposed to do timing belt services every so many miles or every so many years you're supposed to do them. 
This had the original timing belt from the factory, from Volvo, since new. Luckily it hasn't broken. The timing belt is 27 years old. That violates any timing belt service schedule I've ever seen on the planet. Definitely don't want to sell it that way. This is so nice and so new. Nothing really needs to be done except service on this car. The timing belt or water pump. The water pump's not leaking. But I'll show you that the water pump's part of the timing belt system. There you can see my laser pointer on the water pump. There's the weep hole there I'm pointing to. There is no coolant, not even a drop coming out. And if I wiggle the actual shaft on it, it's nice and tight. There's really no reason, as far as leaks or damage, to replace that. But we all know when you do a timing belt water pump on a Toyota or any other car, it's called timing belt water pump service. Only a fool would not change the water pump right now because let's say we put a new timing belt on and three months later the water pump starts leaking for whatever reason. It is 27 years old. We have to do this job all over again. And the question will be asked, why didn't we address that while we had it apart? Well, we are. We're definitely going to take care of that now. So, timing belt, water pump, basically check over this car and we're also going to be doing a battery replacement. So this is very nice under the hood. Let's check out that interior. You guys are going to be surprised as well in there. Okay, ladies gents, it's a good thing it's a Volvo because the get battery is disconnected and we can't turn it on. But it's got that standard analog actual odometer there and it says 15,841. It does have a little bit of a screen down there, which we're going to have to live in misery of what's down there. But obviously with hour and minutes down there, it's probably got to be a clock. Simple gauges, got a tack, we've got our fuel. We also have a gauge for our turbo. So that is obviously something different than most Volvos do not have. As we scroll up, you'll see this is immaculate. I mean, there's just no way. This is a garage princess, and we're going to see that when we get it up in the air because there's no rust, even from New York. But a lot, a lot of hard surfaces here, but that is a very classic Volvo thing. For those of you that have watched our videos for a while, know that I grew up riding around in a Volvo. My mom owned several, but this is nothing like what she had. This has a lot more creature comforts. We have dual climate control. We have a quite impressive radio for being a 96. We've got some nice simple buttons over there as well. We've got our traction control. We've got our moonroof controls. It looks like you can reset some of that info systems right there as well. More creature comforts. Got some heated seats going on and our controls for all of those windows. Now, we like to look in our hidey holes, but this is a car that Bob owns. So obviously we're probably not gonna find too much exciting stuff, except for the original Quick Tips book for this car coming back from 1996. This thing is crazy and look in there. There's not even a hint of dirt, anything. And there's even the little elastic string on here as well. Wow, Bob, this is crazy. As you look at the seat, it is a leather seat. It is a nice ivory color as well. And it is like a sofa. This is quite comfortable. Not quite a sofa from the 70s, but it is a darn close replica. We look at our door card. We've got leather as well as lovely fabric on there as well with a little map holder as well. We do have our embossed Volvo floor mats, which are great because those things are indestructible, much like a Volvo is normally. As we look at our back seat, it is a sofa. It really is a sofa. Look at that thing. Amazing condition, nothing's going on because nobody really rode in here. This is in perfect, perfect shape. One thing that is interesting, and I did note, you can't tell really from here, but there is a 60-40 split that the seats can go down. Typically older Volvos, especially those in the 80s, had the lovely pass-through from the armrest there. Of course, the headliner, we're not going to find anything. There's no Cheeto fingers in here. They didn't even have any potato chips. There's not even going to crumb in this car. This thing is absolutely perfect. We do have a lovely view of our roof up there through the moonroof, but it's in good shape. No marks, nothing like that. There might be just a few water spots, and that's going to be the extent of it. Normally where we see a lot of controls and things, we don't have that because again, it's a 96. We've got the controls for some lighting. That's all there is to it. Okay. Love the manual 
day mode, night mode, day mode, night mode. Yes, it's just a very simple switch there. Manual, of course, but it works good when you've got that semi behind you on the highway. Back at the steering wheel. Nothing fancy going here because it's called a Volvo. They don't make fancy things. We don't have buttons on here, especially in 96. We've got an airbag and that's one of those saving graces because this car is a tank and it has so many safety features. In addition to that great classic gauge cluster in there, that wood trim, this thing is in perfect shape. I'm really curious to see what it looks like on the underneath. Well, let's see if it's just as nice underneath. Here's underneath our radiator core support. Everything is nice and dry. There's a radiator hose. There is looks like an air conditioning line there. No leaks. Here's our engine and the oil filter, oil pan. No drips. Transmission is also nice and dry. Check these brakes. Nice and thick. Nothing loose. Sway bar is nice and tight. You can see there's an undercoating under this car. That's a very good thing. There is some surface rust on some of these surfaces here, which is common on any car. What I meant by rust is giant, cancerous, nasty stuff. Even sitting in a garage, you're going to see this surface rust. Nice thick brakes. CV boots are good. Strut is dry. Sway bar link is good. Nothing loose there. So whenever I did the timing belt job, I was worried about having to drill out these rivets and take this liner out, but you can see the crease right there. They're designed to undo a couple of plastic nuts and it literally just folds. And there you go, you can get to everything. There's our crank pulley, or the crank itself. You can see the water pump up in there. I'm getting ready to remove that one here pretty soon. But everything's dry and clean. Our catalytic converter is still even shiny. Again, there's some surface rust. That's, that's to be expected. This still has shine to it. Again, there's this coating all along the bottom, which I'm really glad they did that to help protect it. Here's our muffler. And like you just saw, there's no drive shaft. There's nothing back here. It is a front wheel drive. Here's our rear end, which is basically just some bars and things. It's not much of a suspension. It's not very complicated at all. Here's our shock, no oil seeping out. This is something we're going to fix here while it's here as well. It's just a little tiny clip that holds on this jounce bumper and it goes up to there and just sticks in. So we're gonna fix that while it's here as well. That's a very, very easy thing to do. Brake pads look good, nothing loose there. Nice dry shock, brake pads good. Nothing loose there either. You can see the jounce bumper here is still intact on this side. We will leave that one alone. Here's our fuel tank and our spare tire area. Let's go ahead and check those tires. So I know what you guys are thinking. 15,000 miles and it's 27 years old. Those tires have to be dry rotted. They're probably horrible. But they've been replaced. They're fairly new. 19th week of 2022. So they are fairly new tires. Very, very good. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So you guys remember on a previous video where we filmed the Mazda CX-9 that's behind us, actually almost all the way back together. We just have some few more things to do and it'll be ready to hit the road. But you remember I was literally swimming through carts and carts full of parts. And it's so nice on these older Volvos that it doesn't require such a teardown to do a simple service. I only needed half of a cart really to do this job. Let's take a look. Here is our serpentine belt, which is original Volvo, but it looks like brand new. There's no cracks. There's no reason to throw this thing in the trash. It looks very nice. And this is the timing belt. This is original from the factory. I imagine in 95 for the 96 model year, you can see the Volvo stamping on it. Original belt all the way from 1996. It doesn't look bad though. It probably would have lasted quite a while longer, but it's just not worth the risk. It's such a nice car. Why would you risk this? So here's all the tools that I use to get it apart. Really not very many tools at all. 
The second level is there's just a little ductwork for a fuse relay box, lug nuts, the main pulley, serpentine belt tensioner. Here's our timing belt tensioner pulley and our idler pulley. There's the cover that goes to the front of the engine. Down below it had a nasty neon green battery in it and EuroAsian Bob was like, this car is so nice, why would we put that nasty ugly battery in a basically factory fresh car? So he bought an OEM dealership Volvo battery so it looks correct to the car like a brand new car off the assembly line. We also have OEM Volvo brand new timing kit fresh from the dealership. We have a new timing belt, idler pulley, we have the tensioner pulley, and also a little sticker that goes along with it. There's actually a tensioner for the timing belt we'll be reusing. We contacted the dealership and some of the techs that worked on some of these. They said, unless they're leaking or damaged, we never toss those. We reuse them. So we're going to reuse that one. It's in perfect condition. I've actually got it in the vise over there, kind of slowly compressing so I can put the pin back in. We also have brand new OEM Volvo water pump, Volvo stated on there, the bolts, and even the gasket is OEM Volvo. I really agree with EuroAsian Bob with his consideration of using OEM Volvo parts, Volvo battery, everything. This car deserves to have everything back the way it was with the Volvo stampings on everything. So whoever purchased this car will have a factory fresh 1996 Volvo 850 Turbo from bumper to bumper, literally. Now he's going to put this up for sale. I believe he's going to do one of the auction sites. I'm not sure which one he's going to use. But if you're thinking, hey, I'll call that guy. I got four grand waiting for that car. You ain't getting this car for four grand. You ain't getting it for 10. It's gonna be way, way higher than that. This thing is perfect. We will put a link in the description to EuroAsian Bob's site. You can also follow him on Facebook and you will get notified when this thing is for sale. But for right now, we're gonna finish up the service on it and get it back to EuroAsian Bob so he can get ready to get this thing sold. Maybe to one of you guys. We'll find out. If you guys are one of the buyers, let us know in the comments and we'll be congratulatory towards you. If you're curious what kind of tools actually I used to work on this car, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's many more cool videos to come waiting for you guys. Thanks for watching.